Hello, everyone. Welcome to Wind Down Wednesdays. I'm your host, Paula Taylor, and this is episode 78. So I'm making good on my promise. I have no notes for this show. I am pre-recording this show, so I have a little bit of a cushion if I completely crash and burn. But what we're going to do tonight is a collective tarot poll for the beginning of the new year. This is our first show of the new year. And then we're going to do a guided meditation. As usual, I have no idea what kind of a meditation we're going to do tonight. Other than I think we spent the last couple of weeks building power. We called home our power, our energy last week. We worked on getting rid of stagnation. And and so this feels like this is meant to be the culmination of kind of the last few weeks in terms of the meditation. We've built a lot of energy and now we're going to just let it really glow and flow and and come into this new year powered up. (sighs) So, happy new year. We talked last week about how I had ambivalence about this idea of celebrating the new year. And not necessarily celebrating the new year, but but the pressure that I was feeling around people kind of messaging this sort of like new year, new you, start the things, blah, blah, blah. Like there, I was feeling a lot of pressure around how I should celebrate the new year as opposed to being in organic flow and just feeling how I want to celebrate the new year. And how I want to celebrate the new year is to encourage us, both you and me, to be where we are, to be wherever you are in that spiritual rebirth process. If you're in that shadow work, if you're in that kind of darkness and that fear, that's okay. That's a perfectly decent place to start the new year. This arbitrary date of having a new year does not mean that you have to be ready to start a new cycle. You may be in the middle of a cycle or winding down a cycle or resting after your last cycle. Be where you are. Don't worry about that external pressure to be in a certain way or be in a certain state. Just be where you are. Let this message come in. I've already shuffled the cards today so they don't make a bunch of weird noise on the podcast. I'm using the Osho Zentero deck that I demonstrated a few weeks ago. I find these cards to be really evocative, so I'm hoping I won't end up needing to look anything up in the book, but I've got the book if I need it. I'm releasing judgments about that. And if you want to know more about my experience with tarot, you can go back and watch the first tarot card poll, which I think is like episode 57 or 67. And I talk a lot about kind of how I've used tarot throughout my life. I'm not going to go into that detail because I want to pull cards today or tonight. But what I will say is that I do everything with intuition and intention, just like I do my energy work. So I've shuffled these cards with the intention of doing a collective card poll, just a general poll for the new year. And as with any other intuitive work, let whatever resonates for you resonate for you. If I start saying something and it doesn't feel true to you, it doesn't sound like it's something you want to take on, then let it go. It's not a message for you. If I show you the card or describe the card as I'm going to do for the podcast and you're getting different intuitive hits based off what you see or hear than what I am saying, than my interpretation, go with your intuition. That's the most powerful messaging that you will receive is from your own intuition. That's one of the reasons I was getting annoyed with all this New Year's messaging. I don't need messaging from outside myself. I need to pay attention to my own messages. I need to pay attention to my divine source, to my intuitive guidance. And sometimes reaching outside of ourselves absolutely helps us to do that. But sometimes we're getting bombarded by things and then we start getting confused and we can't recognize anymore what really does resonate for us. And that's when it's time to kind of go inward, to get some guidance from an intuitive source and, and I love to use tarot for that. So I have shuffled these cards. I think we're going to pull three or maybe four cards and I'll kind of explain. I'm pretty loose with this. There's a lot of like rules about, you know, you can pull different layouts. You can have an intention ahead of time. But I like to just kind of let the cards lead the way. Sometimes I'll pull a single card. Sometimes I'll pull three or four. I can usually tell just as I can in an energy session. When the energy session is complete, I know 
intuitively I can tell the person's energy tells me that we're finished or my own energy or the animal, whatever I'm working with. And the same thing I find with the cards, the energy of the cards will tell me when we are complete. So I am just going to kind of gently shuffle them just since I put them down and I was kind of talking. I'm just re connecting to the cards. I'm reconnecting to my intention to just make this a general card pull for the beginning of 2022. For anyone who may be watching or listening at any point, this doesn't have to be right at the beginning of the year. That's the great thing about intuition. When a message is meant to come to you, it will come to you and, and it doesn't necessarily, it's not tied to a date. If you're hearing this, then you're meant to be hearing it today and just let whatever comes through for you come through for you. So generally the first card I pull is kind of just a general card, gives me an overall idea of what I'm dealing with. What is the question I'm trying to answer? What is the overall feeling of this reading going to be? And so I'm using intuition. If you're listening on the podcast, you can't see me, but what I usually do is kind of let my intuition guide me to a certain portion of the deck and then I find my card from here. A lot of people don't do that. They just shuffle and then kind of pick the first card or let whatever falls out happen. But I, this is just the method I, I enjoy. So, oh, okay. <laughs> this always happens. I pull a card and I'm like, oh, all right. Yeah. Or I get really excited. Um, I have a response usually as soon as I pull a card. And so this card that I've pulled, I'm going to show it and describe it before I kind of go into what I'm getting off of this. So this is a water card, which tends to have to do with kind of flow and that connection to emotion. And uh, so this is the eight of water and it, it says letting go. I'm going to hold it up to the camera for people who are watching and then I'll describe it. So this card has a really green kind of verdant plant, leafy plant. I think it might be a lily pad. It looks almost like it's kind of resting on the surface of some water. And there's some beaded water on this plant. And then you can see that it's that it's on a body of water. There's actually a reflection of the plant in the water of kind of a tree. So it looks like it's maybe by a lake or a pond. And then there's a little ripple in the front, like something has sort of like someone dropped a stone or something into this water. And so it's rippling out. And then at the bottom of the card, it says letting go. And that's <laughs> when I saw that, that's when I kind of made that little chuckle and and like, oh, oh, because letting go is so hard. Letting That's the first thing that came to my mind was like, no, I, I feel like I've been doing this forever. And that's how letting go works. You got to just keep letting go over and over and over again. And if you are a person like me who tends to hold energy, who tends to have some stagnation, which there's not a single person among us that does not have some holding and stagnation to some degree, maybe, you know, more than that. You may have a ton, you may have just a little bit, but everybody's got some. And I, I tend to be somebody who has more than I would like, I have more stagnation and holding than I would like. It can be really hard to let go. These are really long standing patterns that we have been holding on to sometimes since birth, but at the very least since early childhood. In, in those formative years, we started developing these patterns of holding, of protection, of, of trying to keep ourselves safe by a lot of times holding on to things, by being kind of stagnant. And, and even there's that idea of what came into my mind was kind of the little kid hiding under the covers so the monster won't find him. Like we, we cover ourselves energetically with these kind of blankets of protection and, and, and they serve their purpose at the very beginning of when we need them, but then they stay there. And, and eventually if you've ever been under blankets completely for a while, you're, you're going to know it might've felt cozy and safe at first, but then it starts to feel really suffocating and you feel like you can't breathe and the air gets hot and there's no movement. And, and then you start actually getting claustrophobic. And that is exactly what I see in this card. That is the message that is coming through to me is that whatever we have been holding on to, that we initially started holding on to, to serve our purposes that may have, may have physically kept us alive, may have emotionally kept us alive, kept us protected as a child, whenever we developed this habit, it is like that blanket fort. It is no longer a fort. It is 
a torture chamber. It is a claustrophobic, suffocating, energetic stagnation that has been holding us back. And, and so the theme of this reading is that it's time to let that go. It's time to let go of these methods of protection that are fear-based that we started caring so early on, but they no longer serve us. It does not serve you to be hiding under a blanket if you can't breathe and you feel suffocated. But but that step of coming out, that's why I went, oh, when I saw this card, I got a little like, oh no, it's so hard and I have to do it. And it's kind of like when you're getting up in the morning, it's cold and you don't want to get out of bed, but you just have to do it. But once you get up and get going, you know, you can't stay in bed for the rest of your life. I mean, I guess you could, but if you want to move forward energetically in this metaphor, you've got to have some motion. You've got to have flow. We keep talking about flow. That was a lot of what we talked about last week and the week before. And, and there's a reason that people say things like let go and let flow because after the letting go comes the flow. But first you have to have the courage to let go. So that's, that's kind of the theme of our reading. And then sometimes the second card and the third card are usually for me kind of like a, this is what's sort of helping you. This is what's sort of holding you back. And, and I don't always know what order those are going to come in until I kind of pull them and look at them and, and, and relate to the cards. I don't necessarily hold an intention for which one's coming at which time, because what I found is when I do that, sometimes they come reversed anyway. The cards, the energy of the cards will guide me. And so we're going to pull a second card here. And, and this will be, and sometimes it's both. This may help and hurt you. It's, it's just another little piece of information like, okay, this is about letting go. How do I get there? What am I doing? What am I doing that's serving me? What am I doing that's not serving me? That's kind of what these next uh, either one or two cards, depending on how many I pull, will be. All right. So again, on the podcast, I'm just kind of focusing in on the, the portion of the deck where the card is calling to me, and then I'm going to pull the card itself. And you don't want to get too in your head about this. Sometimes I'm like, is it this card? Is it this card? All right. Well, well, I didn't go, oh, when I pulled this one. So that's a, that's a step in the right direction. So to me, this is a this is the card that's telling us this is what's going to serve you in this letting go process. So this uh, card at the bottom says awareness. I'm going to show it to the camera and then we're going to talk about it. I'm going to describe it a little bit for the podcast. And so what I see, this is a really, this is a really interesting picture based on the, the imagery that, that I just used about kind of being like under a blanket. So, so in this picture, there is the silhouette of a person kind of fogged out and they, they look a little bit, their hand is kind of up against glass. Like it looks like they're uncomfortable. They look like they're maybe trapped. That's kind of the, the feeling that I'm getting from this imagery. And then in the center of this picture, there's actually what almost looks like a rip or a tear in this fabric, in this whatever this is um, that this person is up against who's trapped. And then there's a little face that, that looks kind of like a, might be like a little Buddha face. It's a very serene looking face. And, and there's kind of some just like blue, I'm not sure how to describe that. They're not flames. It's almost more like water. There's just a little, at the edge of this rip, there's some prettiness. So there's this kind of drab background where it looks like someone's kind of trapped. And then, but coming out of that, it's kind of coming out of this cocoon, maybe. It's like the like the cocoon is breaking open. And there's this beautiful kind of blue, serene looking Buddha face. So what I'm getting from this intuitively, first of all, is that in, in order to let go, we have to first have awareness. We have to have awareness around what it is that we're holding on to, what it is, where it is that we're stagnant. So we're in this blanket for it. We're being suffocated. We have to have awareness that, there, that we're even there. And a lot of times we don't. We don't realize the extent to which our fear is controlling us when it's been there for 40 plus years. We don't realize the extent to which we are 
not breaking out of our shell when we've been in that shell for so long, we don't remember what it's like to be out of it. And, and so to me, this card is telling us that awareness is what's going to give us the courage to break out of that shell, to pull that blanket apart and come out. And when we do come out, it sounds really scary to let go of those fears, to, to pull this fabric apart and, and reveal that deeper part of yourself. But when we do that, there's a serene, beautiful being underneath. So rather than thinking about like, oh, I'm going to have to let go and it's going to be so uncomfortable and I'm going to feel exposed and vulnerable and oh, it's going to be terrible. This card is telling me that it's exactly the opposite, that the uncomfortableness, the discomfort, that feeling of being trapped and uncomfortable and unhappy comes from hiding, from, from staying stuck with whatever this is that we need to let go of. And that when we can break out of that, then this beautiful, serene, calm, spiritual being will come forth. And, and then who knows what happens next? That's why we're going to pull another card. And I'm just, I'm just kind of checking in to see, we're going to pull two more cards. I wasn't sure if we were going to pull three or four. So generally then card number three is, is kind of a, a similar, like, this is what, this is something else you need to be aware of. This is something that, that serving you or not serving you. So to me, awareness is what's going to serve us to help let go of whatever this is that we need to let go, whatever it is in your specific life that is holding you back, that, that it's time for you to let go of. So we're going to pick a third card. And it's always interesting to me if you ever try this, it might take a little bit of practice, but I get very specific guidance about where to go in the deck and, and which card to pick. Sometimes it's like, is it this one or this one? But it's usually pretty clear. Aha! <laughs> So remember I said, like, usually there's like one of these, one of these cards is going to tell you kind of what serves you in, in, in achieving this kind of goal of letting go. So this is definitely the card that is holding us back. This is the six of clouds and that, that's kind of the mind, uh, we, the water deals with like emotions and flow. The mind deals with fear. The mind deals with kind of that layering of mental garbage that gets stuck. So I'm going to show this card and then I'll describe it. And at the bottom, it says the burden, which is why I knew that this is what, this is the card that's not serving us. This is what's, what's we're holding on to that's, that's holding us back in terms of achieving this kind of feeling of letting go. So on this card, this, this is a very intricate card. So I'll try to describe it as best I can. So there's kind of a jagged mountain and there's two men and they're, they're kind of looking up toward the mountain or maybe the top of the mountain, off into the distance. And, and one of them, the man on the bottom is actually carrying this man on top. And the man on the bottom looks like he's just exhausted. His face looks tired. He looks like he's carrying a burden. And, and then the man he's actually carrying, which I think represents the burden here, is this big, colorful like overdressed man with like buckled shoes and and it looks like he's kind of got rouge on his cheeks and then he has a literal actual rooster sitting on his head which um just kind of makes me laugh and and so he's very like colorful and ostentatious and and then he it's it's like the what I'm getting is kind of like the pride of this rooster he's he's a physical representation of the of pride is kind of what's coming through to me. I'm going to show it one more time for people who are watching the video because that was a long description. So what I'm getting from this card is, uh, so we talked about, you know, the, the message here is about letting go. And what's going to help us with that is awareness. What is holding us back is this burden that we're carrying. And, and when I look at this card and I see these colors and I see this, this painted up man with his colorful rooster on his head, it, what came to my mind is pride. And pride is kind of another word for the ego. So, so we're carrying these fear-based ego ideas in our mind. This rooster sitting on our head. This man with a rooster on his head that's on our back. We're carrying 
this idea that we have to be a certain way, that we have to look a certain way, that we have to present ourselves a certain way. And it's killing us. If you look at the man in the bottom of this picture, he looks like he's about to drop. There's no way he's going to make it to the top of this mountain carrying all of this garbage, all of this luggage, all of this burden. And, and so the message that I'm getting here is that in this process of letting go, we need awareness of where we are. And then we need to recognize that we're carrying a burden that does not serve us. And that's an ego related burden. And only you know what that is. Is that your fear? Is that your pride? Is that your need to compare yourself to others? Is that your love of, you know, money? Is it your obsession with your appearance and, and kind of projecting something that you think others want to see rather than being true to yourself and coming out of your shell as you really up here, like in the last card, rather than letting your beautiful inner Buddha self appear, your serene spiritual self, you're dressing yourself up and that's done out of fear. And so maybe that fear is what we need to let go of. Maybe that's a specific direction for this reading. And again, only you know what about this is responding to you, that you're resonating with you. Um, it's hard to, I don't want to get too specific with this because you will pull out of this what you're meant to hear, if that makes sense. So this reading is about letting go. What serves us in letting go is awareness. And what's not serving us, what's holding us back is this burden, this ego burden that we're still carrying. So then the last card is going to be kind of the, the culmination of the reading. Sometimes it's like the, the direction this will go in the future. Sometimes it's one more kind of card that will help guide you into, into thinking about where to go from here, how to achieve this goal of letting go. All right. Ooh, I like this card. This is nice. So this is the culmination of the reading. This is kind of where we're headed. If, if we can let go with awareness and release this burden, then we're heading to this card, which says the rebel. And I love this card. It, it made me it gave me this feeling of power. And it's funny because I've been talking about how we're building energy, right? We've been building energy. We're building power. We're calling in our energy. We're calling in our power. And I see that visually represented in this card. So this card has a picture of a man. And it looks like he was maybe chained up. The chains are broken. He's holding a torch. He's got this beautiful, long, flowing, rainbow-colored hair. He's got these kind of flowing robes of different colors. But in contrast to the last card, for whatever reason, just the artistic rendition or my intuitive interpretation of this is that, that the color on this man is a true representation of who he is. It's not a show. It's not prideful. It's just his true colors. And you can see that he actually has wings. They're kind of rainbow colored wings. And then there's also a bird kind of up near his face that I would I would describe as maybe a phoenix. That's kind of how it's coming across to me, that the bird that, you know, is rebirthed through fire. He's carrying a flame, this man. And he looks he looks really powerful. He looks like he's got things to do. He's got places to go. He's broken his chains. He's broken out of that blanket fort and he's moving forward. He's got a torch to light his way. He's got the assistance of his like spirit animal here, his phoenix. He's got actual wings himself so he can fly away. So he's broken his chains. And not only is he out of his chains, but he's got these beautiful rainbow colored wings that, that are going to launch him into what's next in his life. And it's interesting to me that this card says the rebel because it's something I've been thinking about recently and especially in the last couple of days is this idea that we are conditioned from such an early age to abide by certain norms, societal norms, family norms. You know, there's all of these pressures on us about how we're meant to be, about how we're meant to appear. And when I see this card, 
I, it calls to something in me that, that is like, no, it's time to rebel. It's time to rebel against these norms. It's time to make our own norms. It's time to make a new life. It's time to make a new world. It's time to make a colorful world on our own terms, with our own spirituality, letting our light shine, letting our true colors come forth, letting go of the prideful colors that we were told to wear, the way that we were told to present ourselves to society is a burden that is weighing us down and killing us. And only when we let that go, will we be able to step into our full power. Only when we rebel against that ego will we be able to step into that full power of our spirit? And it always, it never fails to amaze me how accurate these readings are because I had literally no intention for this reading other than I wanted to do a collective reading to kind of start off the year. And then I had no intention for the meditation other than it has been feeling to me like we are growing our power. We are growing our light and we're getting ready to unleash something. We're getting ready apparently to rebel against the system and make a new system. And I'm ready for that. I hope you're ready for that. And I think that's what we're going to meditate on. So let's meditate together. So for this meditation, I encourage you to sit up. If at all possible, you can sit in a chair with your feet on the floor. You can sit on the floor on a a cushion or a bolster. If you need some support, then feel free to sit with your back up against the wall or in a, in a chair that gives you some support in the back. But for this meditation, it feels like it's important to be in an upright position rather than lying down. And just take a moment, pause for just a moment, come fully present into this moment as we did last week, just briefly call your energy home. Call your energy back from the past, any energy you've left in the past, just with intention, just generally, just quickly call that energy in from the past. I call my energy home from the past into the present moment. And then again, just as briefly, call your energy from the future into the present moment. I call my energy home from the future into the present moment. And then take another moment and call your energy home from anywhere else you've left it. If you've given it away, call that energy home. If you've given it to your job, call that energy home. This is your energy. It does not belong to your occupation. If you've given it away to friends or family members and left it there, it doesn't belong there, it belongs with you. Call that energy home. You can offer energy, but then call it home. Bring it back to your home where it belongs, to your body, to this present moment, to your energetic fields. And if you're holding energy for someone else, if you're holding emotion for someone else, that's not your energy, that's not your emotion. Take one nice deep breath, draw the energy in through the nose, and then Ah, sigh that energy out into the earth. Just let it go to be recycled. That's not your energy to hold. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. And then just notice how you feel if anything shifted by calling that energy home. Maybe you feel like you're sitting up a little bit straighter. Maybe you feel a little bit of power coming to you. Maybe you feel less depleted. Maybe you notice no change and that's completely fine. Let's continue to build that energy just quickly. We've worked on this for the past few weeks, so we're just going through this quickly now. Notice any areas of tension in your body, that's stagnation or holding, any areas of pain or discomfort, and just breathe into those areas with the intention of bringing flow into any areas of tension or holding in the body. You can even say out loud, I bring flow into my stagnation. And just let that intention carry the work for you. Don't get too focused on where you're even paying attention to here. We're just doing this quickly to prepare.
And then similarly, just say out loud if possible, I bring expansion to any areas of contraction within my body and energetic fields. So any areas that were getting tight, that were getting contracted, that were bending over forward, maybe physically or energetically, just expand. Physically open your chest a little bit, maybe move your collarbones apart. Maybe you even open your arms, just physically opening the chest where we tend to get so contracted just for a moment or two here. Again, we're just powering up. We're just moving this energy, kind of getting ready to do a full power up, which is what this meditation is intended for. And then come fully present. You can take two to three of those deep oxytocin breaths, breathing in through the nose, letting the belly float out. <sighs> and then sighing that breath out, making that audible ha sound, vibrating the vagus nerve, bringing you out of that fear mode and into love. Just further powering up that energy before we move into the next part of the meditation. I want you to focus on your lower belly, mid to lower belly, what I call the cave, the solar plexus, the sacral chakra, kind of from your rib cage down to your pubic bone. The lower part of this area we call the womb space or the dantian. This is a storehouse of energy, but this entire cave, this inside of your body here is a huge power source when it is flowing, when it is strong, when it is powered up. We've spent two weeks powering up our energy, calling our energy home, getting our energy to move. So tap into this strength now. There's a few different points of power in the body we're going to cover. So let's start with that cave energy, that Dantian, that womb space, that emotional flow power and then that solar plexus, that shining sun of willpower that exists in that sacral region. These are tied together. The sun shines down onto this garden that you grow in your sacral chakra, in this flowing fertile region. This is one unit of power as it is connected, as it is meant to be connected. So allow these areas to communicate now. Let your low belly talk to your upper belly. And chances are, if you're like most of us, you don't care much for your belly or you actively dislike your belly, let that go. This is not a place for judgment. This is pure power. This is spiritual power. This is energetic power. This has nothing to do with even your physical body. It has nothing to do with the appearance of your physical body, for sure. This is your energetic powerhouse. So let this area begin to expand. It can physically expand. I'm actually kind of pushing my belly out here, which is something we, especially as women, we don't necessarily do. Let yourself get big in this area physically. Let yourself get big in this area energetically. And then let yourself connect down into the earth from this area. As we do every week, we send energy down. So we've got strong roots coming down through our legs, out through our feet, connecting to the earth. That There's a huge storehouse of energy in the earth if we're connected to the earth. There's a huge repository here where we can let go of the energy that's not serving us with the intention that it will be released for the highest good. And the earth will recycle that energy as it's meant to, as it needs to. So we've got a huge storehouse of energy below us in the form of the physical earth. We've got a huge storehouse of energy within us in the form of this cave, this lower and upper part of your belly. Now bring your awareness to your heart. You can place your hands here if you'd like. There's a huge storehouse of energy 
in and around your physical heart. This is your energetic heart space in and around the physical heart. This is the generator of your etheric body, which is your spiritual protection. Just bring awareness into the heart and recognize that having a strong heart, having a protected heart does not mean that you have a hard heart. It does not mean that you have walls up around your heart or that your heart is constricted. Generating this beautiful flow of etheric energy from the heart space this energy flows into all the cells of your body, into all of your organs. It flows around your body itself and is actually visible as white light around the body. When you get excited, the etheric energy sometimes moves up or expands outward. And this is all powered by the heart space. So just set the intention here to power your etheric body. You don't have to know even what that is. I just described it a little bit. Just set the intention to tap into this huge storehouse of energy. This is your protection. This is your love. Love is your protection. Unconditional love is your protection. Unconditional love changes all other forms to itself. Unconditional love changes fear to unconditional love. Unconditional love changes anger, which is really fear to unconditional love. Unconditional love is the strongest force in the universe. It is divine energy. It is what we call God. And that is generated here in your heart space. That This is your connection to that unconditional love. And when we wall off the heart, we actually protect ourselves less. So let the heart open now. You can see I'm kind of actually rubbing my heart space a little bit or vibrating it with my hands. Let your heart space open. Let your heart open. Let yourself be open hearted. Let that love flow through you and realize you need no protection because love is protection. And then allow that heart energy, that beautiful unconditional love to connect to that lower storehouse, that powerhouse of the cave, that solar plexus, that sacral chakra, the lower part of the belly, connect that to the heart, connect the heart now all the way down through to the earth. So you're one line of beautiful connected energy, all of this storehouse of energy. This is all your personal space here. The earth just below you, the actual physical body, the etheric body, just around your physical body. That is an energetic body. And then come into your throat, very closely connected to the heart and, and very often closed just as the heart is. Just let that heart energy kind of creep up into the throat. You can actually see that you've got a bright sun shining from your heart, from your heart and throat. You can see it as a flower, a beautiful lotus opening its petals. Include the throat in this visualization. It's one big chakra for all intents and purposes, for energetic purposes in this meditation. <sighs> and let the heart get connected to the throat. And again, let everything connect all the way down your body, this line of energy supporting you from the earth, from that womb space, the Dantian in the lower belly, that storehouse of willpower and strength and personal power in the solar plexus, that storehouse, that beautiful generator of unconditional love in the heart extending to the throat. And then bring your awareness to the third eye. That's kind of the middle of your forehead. You can, you can see I'm actually massaging my third eye a little bit. You can do that if you'd like. You can tap it lightly. That just kind of stimulates the energy here. And this is your mental powerhouse here. And when I say mental powerhouse, I don't mean the fearful, mental, repetitive thoughts that most of us have throughout the day. This is your visionary powerhouse. This is where you see beyond your ego. This is where you see with your unconditional love, with your divine eye, with your connection to intuition and to that divine unconditional love. So let this eye open. Just set the intention. I allow 
my vision to open. I allow my spiritual vision to open. I see with eyes of spiritual love. You can say any or all of those out loud or whatever comes to you. Powering up this third eye area, this visionary area. And then allowing that to connect to this heart throat energy down into that solar plexus, into the Dantian womb space, the lower belly there, all the way down into the earth. So you're one line of beautiful powered up energy now, earth energy, water energy, fire energy, heart energy, and this air energy of the mind, of the, the true visionary state, not the ego mind, surpassing the ego mind, letting go of fears as they come up, just noticing them. They'll be there when you're done. You don't have to hold on to them now. <sighs> Take a deep breath and notice how you feel. Do you feel powered up? Do you feel strong? Do you feel expanded? Let yourself expand further here, past the outer edges of the body, into the auric space, beyond the etheric body. The aura can stretch out into infinity, to the edge of all that is. So maybe just let it extend out to the edge of the room you're in for tonight. That's enough. Maybe let it extend a little further out into the edges of the, the neighborhood you're in or the town you're in. You can let that aura expand all the way to the edge of the earth itself to the edge of the atmosphere of the earth, out into space. You can let that aura extend all the way to the edge of the universe where you meet the source of that beautiful divine love that you are made of and feel it pour into you. Feel this power, feel this movement, feel this flow. Completely powered up, calling your energy again back from anywhere you've left it that's not part of this beautiful extended being that you are now. Extending your physical being out into the aura, extending your energy out for the last few minutes of this meditation here, really feeling this power. Recognizing this power is love. This power comes from love. Love is the greatest power there is. Love is what will help you let go. Love is what will help you become aware. Love is what will help you let go of your burden. And love in its true sense, unconditional love absolutely makes you a rebel. In a world where we are taught to conform out of fear from a very early age, radical love makes you a rebel. Radically love yourself now. Radically love your body. Radically love your mind. Radically love your beautiful spirit that is unique in this world and is here for a purpose. Radically love all the parts of you. The physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, and then let that love spread out through the aura. We've already extended our space. Let that radical love spread to the rest of the world for just a moment, to the rest of the people you encounter in your life. Let them see the radical love in you so that they might know they can radically love themselves as well. Because radically loving yourself means radically loving others. There is no separation. Radically loving yourself is radically loving God because you are divine. Radically loving the earth. Radically loving your fellow humans. Radically loving the plants and the animals and and all of this beautiful world that we have been gifted to fill with love. That is radical. That is rebellious. Staying in love. Letting go of fear. Letting go of that ego that tells us we need to compare ourselves to others. And recognizing that we are each 
unique and beautiful and different for a reason to serve our divine purpose. Picture all of those lights shining, all of the beings on this planet, not just people, the animals, the plants, rocks, everything shining its beautiful light. Imagine how luminous we could make this planet with our sacred radical love rebellion and commit to that commit to that rebellion within yourself of radical love for yourself in all aspects of yourself commit to that radical love of others recognizing that others are just you there is no separation in this state of expansion we can see past these separations that exist in the physical world and recognize that as we love another, we love ourselves. As we love ourselves, we love God. We love the divine. As we love the divine, we love all. All is divine. Let yourself really see that. Let yourself really feel that now. Feel that in your body. Feel how expansive it feels in your body to embody love, radical love, unconditional love, love without limits, love without borders, love without condition, divine love. Let yourself be divine love. Know that you are divine love. Let yourself embody love. As you're ready, you can gently draw your consciousness back to your physical body. You can leave that aura extended in unconditional love for as long as you can maintain that without needing to put any thought into it. Just set the intention. I remain expanded in radical unconditional love but bring your awareness back to the body to the physical body to this moment recognizing that your physical space expands way beyond your actual body when you allow it to when you focus on that so keeping that feeling of expansion as you come back to yourself here and affirm with me out loud, I am fully present in my body. I am fully present in my body and I embody radical self-love. I am fully present in my body and all is love. Take one last moment here. Feel this expansion. Feel this power. Feel this flow. Feel this clarity of calling your energy home and letting it flow and letting it expand and recognizing that all energy is of this radical, unconditional love, this rebellious love. And embody this as you move forward through the rest of this year. Start this year with radical love of self, of others, of the divine. As you're ready, you can wiggle your fingers and toes, move your head and neck around a little bit. Just coming back to yourself. Maybe shrug your shoulders a little bit.
And as you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you so much for joining me. I thought this was a beautiful episode, even though we didn't do it live. And I hope that you will take this meditation to heart. Literally let this meditation come into your heart. Let your heart open. Let yourself be a sacred, loving rebel, a radical self-loving rebel. Have a beautiful rest of your night. Have a loving rest of your week. And I will see you next week for Wine Down Wednesday.